NBC's coverage of the Ford 400 is brought to you by Allstate, official partner of NASCAR. By UPS, the official express delivery company of NASCAR. UPS, we're going to race the truck. People love the truck. By the Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. And by Miller, there's good enough and there's better than it has to be. Miller, good call. 79 laps are complete here in the Ford 400. Carl Edwards is the race leader by almost five seconds over Casey Mears. Here are the four guys chasing the next Tell Cup today in the season finale. Tony Stewart had that close call when Kyle Busch went around. Jimmy Johnson made a nice move avoiding Scott Wimmer. Carl Edwards has climbed to second in the championship standings, and Greg Biffle has also picked up a few points on Stewart, who currently runs in the 12th position. Take a look at the championship standings as they race right now with 80 laps complete. Tony Stewart still holds on to the lead, but it's only 24 back to Edwards, 55 back to Johnson, and 83 back to Biffle. Those are the four drivers mathematically alive in today's championship event. Well, Edwards is doing everything he needs to do. That's go out and try to win this race, lead the most laps. Now, the sunsets here in the Florida Keys are just fantastic to watch. Unless you're driving a race car. Because what do you see then? The sun. Okay. Especially when you go down the front stretch as you drive west. That's pretty good. That's a great shot of Carl Edwards in the the intensity and the focus that the, these drivers have inside their race car with a clear visor because when the sun goes down they're going to need that watch him work the steering wheel through the corner look at how steady his hands are that is the sign of a great handling race car right there he's not pulling the wheel back to the right because the car is loose he's just turning the car where he wants it and he's very smooth on the wheel He's got this thing working just the way he wants it. The car slides up the racetrack just a little bit, gets back on the throttle, and it comes off the four. Ah, that sun is gone now. Yeah. You know why? Would it be a cloud? Big old cloud. <laughs> That's a good thing. We see Michael Walter in the 15 car going a lap down, about to go a lap down. Carl trying to put him a lap down. He crashed in qualifying yesterday. This is a backup car. Michael runs 32nd. Edwards 5.1 seconds in front of Casey Mears. Mears has the second spot. There's Casey Mears right there, and there's... And here comes Jeff, Jeff Gordon. Gordon. Yep. Now, the five-car Kyle Busch, he has spent a bunch of laps in the pits working on his car. He is... 49 laps down, but it looks like that they were able to get the car, the five car back handling well because he's trying to pass Jeff Gordon. Okay, let's check on his Hendrick teammate. Alan, what are you working on? I was just going to follow up on what Benny and Wally were talking about. Is that the, the sun down or is it behind a cloud? That's what Jeff Gordon's going through right now, too. He, like most of these drivers, has made accommodations inside the cockpit for racing through the sunset into the night under the lights. He's trying to decide, well, do I take this sun stuff off my helmet, or is that going to burn me if the sun pops back out and it's just a cloud? But They're trying to wrestle with that right now. Does he have uh, those tear-offs, um, Alan, that, uh, you know, the dark tear-offs you put on your visor? I don't know if that's specifically what Jeff has on there, because I didn't see his helmet before the race, Wally, but... A number of the drivers do have that on there, and uh, Jeff was just talking about uh, uh, adjusting his visor for the sun. Yeah, that may be why, because if, if he takes it off, you can't put it back on. Right. So once you take <laughs> the dark visor off, you're stuck with what you have. There's Greg Biffle in the 16, and Casey Kane in the 9. I just want to point out that Casey Kane and Ryan Newman are both driving 2004 Dodge Intrepids, something that we talked about briefly last week. They brought them here. They've been fighting to get a new nose from NASCAR for the 2005, and they're racing here basically to make a point that maybe the 04 is a better car on the racetrack than the 05. But Casey Mears is making the point that 2005s are better. Meanwhile, Matt, the 16 cars lost a couple of spots. What's going on with Greg Griffin? BP, he was running up in the fifth position. He's faded back to seventh, trying to work all over Casey Kane. Basically, the car, they've been working on it most of the race, just way too tight on exit up off the corner. He just has to wait till he gets back in the gas. But the car is getting a little bit better as the run progresses. And meanwhile, you're talking about the Sun BP. It was so bad earlier when Ricky Rudd left here road. He had his hand up in front of his face, trying to block the sun. Just leave. Well, 
problem. Not a problem now. Yeah, the That's cloud it. cover moving in. Jimmy Johnson has gotten around Tony Stewart. Johnson into 12. Stewart back to 13. Carl Edwards, the race leader, 5.3 seconds over Mears. Under caution after a crash by David Stremme, the car's on pit road to Matt. And Biffle's team trying to work on both his entry and exit, talking about a number of adjustments. Wedge on the left side, also going to push in a spring rubber on the right rear. This will cost him just a little bit of time, Dave, on pit road. Matt, Jimmy Johnson said the entry's a lot better. I feel like I have a four-wheel drift coming off the corner. Wedge adjustment left side, Allen. Going to make a four-tire change on Tony Stewart's car. Also looking to make a full round wedge adjustment on that left rear side. The car tight, Marty. Carl Edwards, the leader on the top of your screen, said the car was just where it needed to be. Barely tight from the middle of the corner off. They go up one round the track bar, and they easily win the race off pit road, Bill. You're not kidding. The mirrors, Gordon. The rest of the guys off of pit road. Now let's show you what brought out the caution. 91 laps complete, David Stremme in the 39 car. Yeah, the right front go down, right front tire goes flat. When that happens, these cars go straight ahead. And Stremme took that straight to the garage. Under caution here at Homestead in the Ford 400. The field is coming to get the green here at Homestead Miami Speedway in the Ford 400, and just as I say that, NASCAR has withdrawn the one-to-go flag. Still working on some cleanup here on the front stretch. So we'll stay under caution and can show you what's gone on the first 95 laps. Driver introductions, the championship contenders talking it over. Tony Stewart, ready to go. Lap 16, Scott Wimmer goes around. Who's that? Oh, Benny, the 48, Jimmy Johnson gets by. Just barely gets by. And Ricky Rudd makes contact with Kevin LePage. Some of Scott Riggs' crewmen got in the way of the 21 car, but everyone is okay. Treated and released at the infield care center. Kyle Busch won last week in the wall this week. Once again, the 48 car was able to get by, but he did hit the apron with the left front, left front valence on his car. We see a little bit of a little damage, which rolled back under it. Lap 43, Bobby Labonte, final ride in the 18 car, goes around, got a piece of the wall. Bobby currently runs 31st, one lap down. And the most recent caution, David Stremme. And you think he knew that tire was going down? Yeah, it looked like going down the straightaway, he was he felt something because he was a little bit slower than usual going to three. He didn't hit the wall nearly as hard as he could have. Now it's time for our singular race talk poll. Your favorite moment of 2005. Jeff Gordon won the Daytona 500. Tony at the Brickyard 400. Carl Edwards with his uh, four flips this season. One for each victory. Or Jimmy Johnson's win over Bobby Labonte at the 600. Speaking of Jimmy Johnson, in conversation with his crew chief, Chad Knaus, a few moments ago. I don't know where you're running on the racetrack, but 99 is the fastest car by far. And he's, I mean, he's running the wall all the way around the racetrack. I'll keep playing with it. I tried to move up once, and carrying that extra speed on entry just made me looser. So we'll see how Jimmy handles that. Restarts ninth. Carl Edwards, the race leader. Tony Stewart back in 14th. And Jeff Gordon will restart second spot. We checked the, they checked the tape as the car's exited pit road. He beat the 41 car by just three or four inches. If that. If that, yes. Now, Jeff Gordon has been playing his cards a little bit loose, especially after the restart. So he'd really like to get away from these guys behind him until his car comes in. And he's got a pretty good gap right now between him and Mirrors. We're not to sunset yet, but with the cloud cover, we probably won't see the sun the rest of the day. You expect this track to tighten up, Benny? Uh, yes, I think it will. But I think if your car is a little bit loose, and the sun goes down, these front tires start gripping the racetrack better, it's going to be even looser than it is wow. now. Yeah, this track hasn't been going the way normally no. like Charlotte goes and places like that where it does get, when it gets cooler, it gets it's tighter. But we haven't seen that so far, especially in the Bush race last night. That's the first time the next Cup cars have raced here under the lights. 
Carl Edwards, the race leader. An update from Marty. Well, under the caution, Bill Carl Edwards from talking about his race car. He said it is loose in the short run as Jeff Gordon tries to pass him for the lead. Hard to drive it, but Wally, what he did is he made one turn towards the front brake. With the car being loose, you add more front brake. That will tighten up the car. Alan? Uh, just an update on what Jeff Gordon did, his, uh, did on his uh, last pit stop. The team making a couple of different adjustments. Uh, one round of wedge in the left rear, track bar adjustment. Jeff says the track, BP and Wally, feels like it's getting slicker and slicker as the sun goes down. Yeah, that's what they said last night too, Alan, and, and, uh, which is unusual. Normally, like I said, when the tracks cool off, there's more grip. We haven't seen that with this racetrack. Side by side for third, Ryan Newman in the 12 and Casey Mears in that 41 car. Kevin Harvick charging from behind. So a terrific battle, for, a terrific run for Kevin Harvick in that 29 car. And Casey Mears does not want to give it up. How about Harvick, Dave? Crash. Scott Riggs is in the wall. Elliot Sadler goes around him. Caution is out. Well, what do we say? As the sun goes down, it's getting slicker. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what happened here. Scott, there's Scott up on the high side, and he's just going to lose the car. You know, you carry so much speed on these mile-and-a-half racetracks, and it just doesn't take much for your car to get sideways. And the worst part about it is if your car is loose getting into the corner, there's not a whole lot you can do to save a race car when you lose it right here. Just start sliding up the track and there's nothing you can do, huh? Right. Don't expect the leaders to come to pit road, so we'll duck in a commercial break. Jeff Gordon is the race leader.